many of you know if you're dead, you can't be used, right? So the dead church can't be used. The lukewarm church is compromised and they can't be used, right? So God is looking for those who are working in love and alive and actively engaging in his spirit, seeking him even when you can't find him. Because see, he is the God who hides sometimes. He wants to test your desire and your hunger and your thirst for him. Amen. You stay with it, your dry spell will break. You stay with it, your deliverance will come. And sometimes the hardest thing to do is to remain focused on the thing that you have faith for, on the one desired outcome of your prayer. It's hard sometimes to be focused on that. And it's easy to get swayed by the facts of a situation rather than to remain in belief for a future hope. Hopefully that makes sense to you. But whenever we are swayed from the practice of believing God for something or for someone in our lives, we find ourselves looking at the problem instead of the solution. And as I sat the Lord in prayer this morning, this is what I heard him say. He said, settle your hearts, my dear ones. I have a plan and a purpose to work some things out for your good and for my kingdom purpose. I am here for you even when you are not seeking me. This is the love of the Father. I have a book with your destiny purpose written in it, but you must first seek me with all your heart and soul. Put to rest the worries and concerns of your life and seek me. I am a rewarder to all who seek me. I will turn from my place and hear your words as you release them from a pure and undefiled heart. I am aware of your desire for change, and yet you ask, but do not follow through with listening for my response. And when you think about these questions that the Lord asked this morning, if you ask me and walk away before I respond, how will the change come? And see, there's, a, there's something about seeking God and waiting, being quiet in his presence, very difficult for some of us with busy minds and busy lives. But that's what he's asking for. I've seen the Lord practically stop the clock on days that we've taken Sabbath specifically to seek him. He makes up the time. And then he says, uh, how will you gain the wisdom you are seeking? If you do not make the changes necessary for your loved ones to see my fruit in your life, how will they know that I can do miracles? So there's, if you can already hear, there's a something from you in response to seeking God. There's always a two-way street with God. And we have been taught in the local churches that you just, you know, raise your hand, say a sinner's prayer and all is good. But that isn't what the word of God teaches. And then he goes on to say, wherever your emotions rule you, your flesh is in control and you invite demonic powers to rule over you. I am the one who is to reign, not me, but the Lord. I am to one, I'm the one who is to reign in your heart and soul. This means that all your emotions, thoughts, feelings, and experiences are to be filtered through my word and my spirit. And the Lord says to invite me into these areas of your life, the places of unmet expectation and unfulfilled desires. I am interested even when you do not think that I am. 